I really just want to come up and meet the person who like made stereotypes and just ask them what were they thinking. What is an ideal woman? Jessica and Susanna, current seniors at Bethesda Chevy Chase High School, stated that an ideal woman was blonde, <laughs> tall, tall that you want. Although it's evident that neither girl completely fits this definition, they both say this is what it is. Andrew Morrison, the chief of the gender division at the Inter-American Development Bank, the division which creates development projects to create gender equality in the Americas and the Caribbean, states the issues that stereotyping creates. I think stereotyping for about ideal women or ideal men is extraordinarily limiting both to women and to men. Yeah. Stereotypes are something that affect everyone. Whether you're a male or a female, there are going to be certain stereotypes that you may be pushed to uphold. Nowadays, media, technology, advertisements, etc. All play a role in helping or abolishing stereotypes in society. I think technology is a double-edged sword in the sense that some of the STEM technologies, some of the, the internet technologies are great equalizers because you have no idea if a great web designer is a man or a woman. All you see is the great web design. Right? Yeah. Technology is a great leveler. On the other hand, there are parts of technologies which are really dangerous toward gender equality. And I'm thinking about the um, harassment and the bullying that goes online, and the shaming and the body image stuff that goes on online. Yeah. So technology is neither good nor bad. It's how we use it. Yeah. Challenges such as the A4 challenge, which consists of taking a piece of A4 paper and holding it up vertically and seeing if you can see your waist on either side, go viral and end up creating a stereotype of how women should look. For perspective, an A4 piece of paper is 8.3 inches wide. And that seems to be what a lot of women believe. If you are over 8.3 inches wide of your waist, you are then fat. That being out there and like hashtags the, about the that. The need for the thigh gap. Yeah, like I don't That's have not natural. either of those. <laughs> Challenges like these and other social media expectations can truly be seen having an effect on how the youth is using these technology. They once that told me story. that I didn't get like 50 likes in the first five minutes, so I should delete my picture. I was like, that's not why I posted this picture. Yeah, that's, that's ridiculous. Fun. Clearly, technology has its place in creating or abolishing stereotypes, such as the UN's He For She campaign, a project in which the UN is trying to get males to help promote the gender equality issue. But on the flip side, challenges such as the A4 clearly have their own role in creating stereotypes such as how skinny women should be. People all over the world are trying to break these stereotypes with things just as big as campaigns or things that are so simple and easy such as... I just try to be my own person. If I want to wear a t-shirt and running shorts, then that's what I should do. I don't need to wear a dress everywhere. Yeah, I think posting whatever you want to post, despite what people think you should post or... But how do stereotypes affect other places, such as schools and institutions? And why should we push for more diversity within these institutions and within schools? institutions have a responsibility to grow and to really do their damnedest to promote diversity in all its forms. And I'm, I'm not, I don't mean a human rights argument. I mean here a sort of an economic slash productivity argument. There's been some pretty good research done around the world that shows that diverse firms that have women in senior management, that have women on their boards, tend to outperform less diverse firms. Um, they have better return on equity. You don't need to be a sort of a card-carrying feminist to want a higher return on your equity if you're a stockholder of a firm. Um, why do diverse firms outperform less diverse firms? They do it because the, the more diverse firms have more creative ideas, more diverse opinions, 
they more mirror their their consumers, and so they're better 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 able to figure out what their consumers want. So I think it's in organizations' best interests to promote diversity. Creating diversity within institutions can simply be done by. So I think you can increase diversity in clubs by asking people what they want out of the clubs and asking people that are different than your than yourself. So the techniques that beyond school clubs. They're techniques which organizations can use in how they interview to make sure that everyone has a fair chance. If you're interviewing for a job, you can make sure that your interview committee looks like the population you want to have in your organization yeah. so you don't have all male interviewing committees. Does that make sense? Yeah. I asked Mr. Morrison that if he could tell the youth of America one thing that would help them push to promote gender equality, he said... I wouldn't tell them anything. I'd show them. All right, yeah. I'd show them a management committee where I have one man and there are two women on my management committee. I, I'd make sure that I was showing a level playing field. Yeah. Because I think telling doesn't convince as much as showing does. It's clear that stereotypes have their effect on society, both for the good and for the bad. Whenever solving an issue, it's important to have a big picture and a little picture goal to combat all aspects of the problem at the same time. Societies need to have a big picture goal for everyone to work towards, but individuals themselves need to have their own goals that they can do in an everyday situation to fix the issue. A big picture goal that society should have is ending photoshopping of models. This will help build healthier body images for both males and for females. Small picture goal, which an individual can implement, is creating a definition of beauty that's more broad and inclusive for more people. By being more inclusive for more people, it's going to allow for more people to believe that they are beautiful, which is going to help for a healthier society. At the end of the day, stereotyping only limits people, and by ending stereotyping, the world becomes a much bigger place. <laughs>